Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Brian Rowe from LSN TAP. We've got a special presentation here today. It's kind of outside of a, what our normal webinar series is on. Um, it's on uh, building mobile apps, connecting with students. Uh, it's a very interesting organization. Uh, I'm turning it over at this point to YC, who's going to give a, a presentation on a diverse. Uh, please let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And, uh, kind of what you guys have done for projects and how you may be able to connect with the legal services community and work with some of the great nonprofits here um, in doing mobile app development. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction. So first of all, I want to say thank you for everyone putting your time on tuning into this webinar. And thank you for us and um, TAP for hosting us today. So. My name is YC. I'm the Client Relationship Manager for Devers, and here with me is Lambert Shao, and he's our lead Android developer. Hello. So um, first, we'll be going through um, just very briefly. Lambert will tell you guys um, who we are and what we do, and then I'll and then we will spend a lot of time talking about what exactly is the app development and what does it mean for a nonprofit to build an app development and how the uh, app and also how they need to prepare for it. And then we'll just at the end very quickly describe how we do it. So our core team consists of six people. Three of us are seniors at Boston University and the rest are alumni. We have mixed specialties in technology and business development. I am a, I'm one of the seniors. Um, I major in business with concentrations in finance and information systems and also a minor in computer science. And uh, this next summer, I'll be starting full time as a technology advisor for Ernst & Young. Uh, YC has experience in working with nonprofit clients. For example, she worked with us. Uh, she worked on the she worked with the uh, Peace Corps Northeastern Recruitment Team for one of our apps, as all, uh, and worked with the Boston Tax Help Coalition. And she, so she really has a deep understanding about what nonprofits uh, might need. So overall, um, I'll just go through this very quickly. We believe that why and um, the question of purpose is more important than what. So why we do it is because we, wa we um, want to change the way that social organizations work. One issue that we see is that social organizations might not be able to keep up with the um, very fast, very quickly changing technological world. Um, like Moore's Law, for example, every two years, processing power doubles. And so we want to help like the passionate people who devote their own time and effort to really make an impact. And we want to give developers a chance to use their own expertise uh, because it's sort of, it's very rare for them to be able to help a cause um, through the skills that they've developed over how, however many years they've been programming or if they have had no experience, we want to teach them how to do that. And so uh, what we do we, is um, app development and teaching. So we specifically empower those organizations with technology that helps them run better. We provide students a chance to get real-world opportunities and feel like they're helping those around them. Uh, some organizations that we've helped, worked with in the past are Boston Tax Help, are, are the um, the Peace Corps and Boston Tax Help Coalition. Uh, so before we get into the um, the process, we're going to just talk about the um, the overall back end and front end. We're going to define what it is, and we're going to sort of talk about the general the, the cycle as a general uh, overview. So the front end is basically the pretty looking outer shell that users interact with directly. It's the buttons you press and the text boxes you type into. An iPhone, for example, is so successful because its user interface is so easy to understand that a toddler can use it. And the, the front end is all about the aesthetics and basically the usability of the app. The back end is another beast entirely. To clear up a common misconception, a back end is not the equivalent of back office. Where the front end is the button, the back end is how the button works. Uh, it's basically the brains of the entire operation. Um, an example of a back end is the ability to search for an app on the App Store and find it among the millions of other apps. And then the ability to press a button and get all of the information of the app onto your phone. Without a back end, the front end literally does nothing. Pressing the button will do absolutely nothing. It'll probably just change an animation, but you won't get any information. So the back end, because it's all about information, it emphasizes the security, the content management, and the actual information that you see, because it needs to come 
very, it needs to come without being interrupted. You don't want to get any sort of viruses from downloading something. And so that's sort of what the back end itself uh, emphasizes. Um, this is a brief overview of the entire mobile app development cycle. There are five main steps. It starts off at the top with analysis, where the, uh, the nonprofits and the developers are trying to figure out the needs and features that will be included in the app. Basically, you're trying to figure out the actual functions that you're going to want to see. And um, you basically, we want to also prioritize that list um, for you to, to, to think about what are the most important features and uses that you're going to get out of this app. Um, next step is the design, where the developers design the, uh, the front end of the app, the actual aesthetics, and they're going to brainstorm what it look like. At this point, they'll also think about who the users are and um, how they'll use the app. Um, implementation is the actual writing of code, where they take the brainstorming function from the analysis phase and the brainstorming of aesthetics from the design phase and make the full app. So this is where they take the analysis and design and they put it together and they actually code it out. Um, but after that, it might have a bunch of bugs. And so afterwards, you need to test it to make sure it's, it'll run, it'll do everything smoothly and efficiently. Um, so the last step is uh, basically just the idea of continuous improvement because de depending on what kind of um, software development lifecycle you look, you're looking to do, it, you may have multiple inter iterations. You may have multiple features that you're adding on with each and every cycle. Um, and so that's why there's a continuous improvement. You want to make it even more efficient, even better. Uh, and so you and your developers will continuously improve it. Um, well, so for now, before moving on to the um, next phase where I'll be talking about um, what it means for the nonprofit, does anyone have any questions? Okay, moving on then. Well, I guess we'll move on to the next <laughs> so, um, part. I mean, what what is the, the time frame for this development cycle? How long do you guys typically spend putting together an app? Is this a year or a month? Um, what what so does this mean this in real time? Be, so would this be targeting um, the, the general um, processing, like the, the general app development or specifically to us? Uh, specifically to you, to you guys and, well, and working with students and that type of stuff. What What's the yeah, time we, frame look like? We take around, um, it depends on the program because we are going to be educating the student at the same time. It will be roughly around six to seven weeks. Um, I can talk more about us and what we do at the end of the, this uh, presentation. Would that be helpful? Because that will give you a better Definitely. picture of what we do. Yeah, but yep. for the time being, is any, does anyone have any questions on like the front end, back end, and this general app development process? Well, I'm assuming we will move on to the next session. You can also take questions at the end if you uh, if you think of anything new. Yeah. So the next part. Um, so for social organization, since I'm the client, um, basically the nonprofit, the client relationship manager, I deal with speak with quite a lot of nonprofit, and I find out that the main question a lot of organization don't really get is how can a mobile app really help them? Because sometimes they might want it, but they don't know what's it for. Because um, So one thing you have to understand about mobile app, especially app development for nonprofit, is what is the reason why you need it? You have to understand why you need this app. Otherwise, if you just want a mobile app just because everyone else is having one and it'll be cool to have one, then mobile app might not be for you. Because if you don't understand the fundamental reason why you need it, you might have difficulty trying to like uh, work with your developers or whoever will be developing your mobile app, and then there will be a lot of miscommunication just because no one understands the main reason why you need this app. So this picture is a little bit, uh, quite a lot of things, but this is the um, overall app development process in terms of what nonprofit needs to get. So the very first step is the need analysis. So what Bert was talking about is the analyze part. So you have to understand what exactly um, are the problems that your organization, uh, your organization is having and how can a mobile app solve that problem. 
So that is the why part of the entire app development, and this is the fundamental of the entire um, mobile app. And then after that, you need to work with a lot of logistics before you start building up like the coding part because this, what Brett was talking about, the backend system, which here would be basically the database. If you don't have a good database, um, then it would be very difficult to actually have the front end system, which is the mobile app. Um, so the main question about database is whether you have you already have one in house um, existing database or you outsource it to a third party. Because if you have your own database, it will be much easier to work with. You can just simply share this database and give access to the developers, and they can just make a mobile app using the same database. But if you have if you outsource it to a third party, then that's where it could be get a little bit tricky. You and your developer will need to see with your um, third party outsource the party to discuss like what other limitation or what other um, obstacles of like actually getting access to your data. Um, because in the past, that's actually something that we have to work with that um, they cannot give full access to the developers to use it for the mobile app. So that would be something you have to keep in mind if you have a third party, if you also source your database to a third party. But then if you actually don't really have a good database right now, so having this mobile app, you would definitely need one. So maybe this would be a good idea and good timing for you to actually design one and have uh, one for your organization. So the next is wireframing. Um, so the wireframing part is basically like a blueprint of what your mobile app will look like. And at this process, you need to understand um, who are the people will be using your mobile app. Um, you, you need to understand the user. Um, that is because, like, imagine you have a firm. This firm is, um, I'm just have a, like, um, let's just say the firm A. They have around like a thousand volunteers, and all the volunteers are around middle age or retirement age. So, and your primary communication is through like email and text message is pretty inefficient. And this firm A is trying to have a mobile app to eat so that they can actually talk through like the app instead. Um, so when you do the wireframing part, what you need to think about, maybe for example, you think about that since they're on the, um, these volunteers are older, you will want to design your app to have thicker font or button that's relatively bigger so it'll be easier for them to use because you need to think about how your user will interact with this app. This is the phrase where you have to need to have a good understanding of who are the user. So after this, having a blueprint of your mobile app, now we'll go um, to design. And design is where you make the blueprints into something really pretty and something that like it would look like you want to use it like with colors and everything. But with this design part, so for your, you as a nonprofit, if you have any like branding material or any existing logo, you should give it to the developer so they can use it or have a standardized like color theme. Otherwise, it might look a bit weird and awkward if the app doesn't look like something that your organization would own. So this is the part where you still have to work a lot with your um, developers. But afterwards, starting around the programming part, you can it's where you get a little bit hands off. And the developers will be taking over and they will be writing a lot of like lines of code and actually doing the magic of app development and making it into an actual app. And then toward they will have the quality assurance. And that is the part where they will do a lot of testing, making sure there's no bugs and you can publish it and user can use it like um, on a daily basis. So that um, kind of sum up the entire process like just very quick overview of the entire process of the um, app development and what the nonprofit needs to do. As Bert was saying that we actually adding value to both parties for the students and for you, for the nonprofit. So for the students, um, we teach them a lot of the front end mobile app development education so that they can actually make the mobile app they will be the one who's programming it. But what we add value to the app development process is that we are the one who will try to help you out, help you out and walk you through to figure out what exactly is the reason and the purpose of the app, the why part that I was talking about, and also have this app integration support between the front and the back end. Um, so making sure that what, wherever you have the back end system, whether you have a third party or you have your own um, database, 
or you don't have a database that will work with you, making sure that you will have a good database for your mobile app to use. And last, uh, last but not least, um, the last I will add to is the quality assurance. Making sure that what the student make for the mobile app is good quality, there's no bugs, so that you can use it and publish it. And we also have a, a project repository so that um, you can, we can actually keep track with your mobile app and then we can, when well, you can come back and we can fix any bugs you have and give updates and you can also come back to add more features to your app. So it will be a continuous um, partnership or relationship that we'll have. Um, and that is probably. That basically concludes sort of our own process and basically the, um, the way that we do it. I guess to add a little bit more detail, we have we can go into some of the programs that we've done in the past. So, for example, the Peace Corps, I believe that was um, ten weeks, right? Uh, it was around yeah, it was around like nine to ten weeks. So, it w we worked with the Boston College students, and um, I actually met with one of the guy from Peace Corps Northeastern Recruitment Team, and they were they were already having their own database, and they know what they want for the app, but they just really need an app so that their recruitment can their recruitment team can actually like go and use it. Um, so we spend around like <clears throat> we spend around I would say seven weeks or so um, working with the students, teaching them the um, mobile app development education, and then we spend like extra like two more weeks to do all those like um, quality assurance, making sure all the, there's no bugs and everything, and deliver the app to Peace Corp. Um, and then the second nonprofit that we've worked with before um, is Boston Tech Hub Coalition. So in, for people who don't really know what it is, they provide, they actually provide um, free tax preparation help for a lot of um, low-income family in Boston area. And we just kind of did a prototype for them. It was like a very short, um, around four weeks summer program, just creating a prototype so they know what to get out of like an app and later on they'll probably make an app out of it. So those are the two programs we have in the past and we are having another one right now at Boston College. But since right now, um, our team, we do have a lot of members. Uh, basically right now, uh, for what we're doing for the Boston College uh, right now is sort of a more uh, it's like a small project, a community-based um, project where we're making an app for a club on campus. Um, this is sort of uh, another idea that we had where we wanted to sort of basically reach out into the college and into the community around them and see what they can do from that. You know, this is more of um, uh, we're trying to um, basically just sort of um, get involved in what's happening around there right now and trying to give a little bit more control to the Boston College um, uh, little chapter that we have there and see how it, how it goes. Yeah, so and Pabin, does anyone have any questions? So what is the, um, so the time commitment for a nonprofit in working with you guys, it sounds like is uh, uh, two to three months on the initial development side. Um, what what is the cost for the nonprofit, um, and um, what is really the staff dedication that they or um, hours that they really need to put in and set aside for working on something like this? Uh, yeah. Um, so in terms of the cost, is actually going by case by case. So. Um, well, let me actually go back to this slide. So we, um, it, it, you will have to contact with me. I have an individual talk and we'll decide what would the price be. But what you'll be paying won't be any of the app development part because we are teaching a student and the student is providing for you guys for free. And you will, you will only be charged for what we added value to. That's why it will be significantly cheaper than what you have outside. Um, so that would, if you want to know about the price, you will probably need to um, send me an email later on and we can talk <clears throat> after the, um, this presentation. In general, app development is a very like unique thing because of how, you know, one app might need a, like a login feature or another app might need, I don't know, a calendar. It's really 
and each of those, each little different feature would take a different amount of time. So it basically just, um, it's, it's very, very case by case. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in terms of the um, time commitment, so if we look at this slide over here about like the general process, um, so what we, this is the entire process of what you need to think about in the, like just in general, but with us, since um, I'm the client relationship manager, I'll be working with you for like the, re the understanding why you need the mobile app or like who are your user and what your database. I'll be working with you before the program will start, before the program with the student will start. So your commitment is, um, with me will be mainly like maybe one to two weeks beforehand. And then it just, it would be nice if you like, and if we have one member from your team to work, um, to come in or like to Skype in with the student once a week, just so that we can keep track with the student, making sure they are not making something that you don't want. But it will be like a brief check-in, maybe like once a week for like, um, like an update for like 15 to 20 minutes. But then it will be just, so the main, the time that you have to spend is mainly the beginning part and then just like around um, 10 to 15 minutes each week. And then also at the end when the student have to present to you of what they did and you can give them feedback as well. Yeah, so it's very heavy so, on the planning and the, um, the deliverance phase. And then in the middle, it's um, basically just a check-in of like, we wanna make sure that we're giving you what you want to get, basically. Okay. Um, so to reiterate, the, the cost is there, there's a small amount um, in working with you guys kind of as uh, project managers and oversight, but the development time from the student is um, all basically uh, free at that point. Um, they're working as a volunteer and they gain um, some mentorship from you walking them through the app development process. Is that yeah, correct? They, yep. So okay. Like the only thing you charge is in case it, um, it would definitely be more the support size that app integration between the back end and the front end that is one of the biggest part and also understanding why you need it and making sure everything is set up for um, the front end development that part is what we'll be charging for but not the fr um, front end developing part okay um, what could you walk through one of the apps that you've already put together and tell me why you ended up going with an app over a mobile website? A lot of people in our community have said, hey, maybe we should just do uh, responsive design, mobile website, that's where we wanna put our time. Why, why would you consider an app over uh, mobile website, responsive design? Yeah, certainly. So. Um so for one, one of the example, I don't think I can really give like the past um, client too much detail, but I can give like just a general example with like fake names and everything. So one of the biggest thing why you would want a mobile app over like a responsive web is because like depends on how the user will use it. This is where you have to understand why you need them, like what is the problem that you have and who are the user and why you need the mobile app. So for example, when like one of the biggest reason why a lot of like in general for what I've seen in the past, the main reason why a lot of nonprofit want mobile app is because um, they need for the volunteer and scheduling reasons. So for example, like if a volunteer, like the, they will volunteer like once a week already, like no, they will come in like week, uh, weekly or bi-weekly. Like it's very inconvenient for them to actually need to go on the website and then like log in and sign up. Whereas it's like on the mobile app, they already like logged in and it'd be one click away for them to like sign in, check in, or like just um, register or anything. So I have seen a lot of in the past that like the, um, a lot of like nonprofit will want mobile apps just so that it'd be easier to communicate or easier to schedule. That was one of the biggest, biggest thing. So I guess um, when you think about your problem is, if you have to think about whether like it'll be more appropriate for an app or responsive web. So for example, I've also have spoke with another nonprofit. They wanted an app and they want to have the volunteers or the potential volunteers to sign up through their website, but their um, the sign up form is like five pages long. So in that case, that would not be appropriate on uh, the mobile app because it's too law and it will be much more efficient if you have a website to sign up and the app is purely for like just um, 
signing in instead of registering. Hmm. So these are the things you have to think about. You have to think about who are your user and how would they be using it. You shouldn't have a mobile app just because mobile app is cool. That is definitely not the reason you should have. Having a mobile app should be able to solve the problem that your organization should have, and it should be making more efficient and help you do your job better. That is definitely the reason so why you have it. One of the bigger yeah. arguments that I've heard for mobile apps in our community is that um, the access to web is definitely limited in some locations, especially when you get into rural locations. If you have a significant amount of information that can be downloaded onto a mobile app, then when a client is not directly connected to the web, they still have access to that information. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, additionally, we, we definitely have people in the community that are um, looking at the possibility of using apps to do document assembly to create um, legal forms that could then be filed later. Um, there is some advantage in keeping uh, private information on uh, your own device until you share share it intentionally um, externally. Um, I don't know. It, it It's an interesting space. It's definitely one that um, legal services has not done a lot of yet but there is some interest here in uh, looking at how we can explore this area. Right, so there's definitely been, we, we, we did make a mobile app um, where one of the features was being able to save the information to your phone. Again, I won't go into too much detail, but um, this is like specifically for like offline use. Like one of the parts of it was um, basically like, um, like a instructional sheet, for, for example. And that was um, like for if like you won't get any signal there at all, um, and so like mm -hmm. it's basically it's right there in your hand. You don't have to do anything for it. So that's a, like basically another convenience measure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also I'll just bring up some of the like good point of mobile apps. But of course, mobile app might not be for you. You have to think about it. Um, but some other good point is that if you if you want your user to be like you, if you want the interface to be able to tailor to the user um, and the user can just kind of um, decide how they want to um, interact with the app or interact with whatever you, the platform that you have, mobile app would be better. They will give you the ability to actually, for the user to actually like customize their own interface and everything versus on the website, you can't really do that. It will be standardized for all the users. So for example, let's say like if you want an app that like the, um, the administration will have one like one version of it doing different information and versus the user have a different one and then sometimes it just might be easier to have it on the mobile app than like on the website so it depends okay so I don't Hi. Um, Andy. this is this is Matthew um when you guys build apps do you um program them individually for Android and iPhone kind of in their own native languages or do you use a bridge program like PhoneGap we program them natively. Yeah, we so we do. We will have like two different teams, student team working. Um, they were working together, but like at the same time, separate. We'll have a um iOS team, um, and also we'll have an Android team. So they will be like okay. sharing the same same design, but it will be different language. Yep. So things like Windows phones are then just kind of kind of left to the side. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have much support for that right now. It's, yeah. Uh, of the things we're looking at, but <laughs> understandably so. And uh, will you guys support like the the updates? I've I've programmed uh, apps in in both languages, and as soon as I rolled them out, you know, iPhone would come out with a slightly bigger phone, and my app would be all kind of messed up, and I'd have to go and and reprogram it. Do you guys kind of continue that support after the app is built? Yeah, we do intend to. Um, it's sort of a case by case basis again. Yeah. Uh, so mainly it's also about like the, what I was mentioning about that we provide right here, we provide the project re repo repository so that we can actually help um, the app to update later on. But then it will be case by case, we'll have to speak with the nonprofit itself just because mobile app is so different for every organization. When you want to tailor it, they are different. Also just a quick developer tip. Um, if you just change it to like DPI, it should scale with the the screen if you change the way that you're like uh and I, change the way that you're actually working 
<laughs> yeah, I, I thought so too. It's still, you know, buttons were suddenly in a different spot. And, um, and do you guys, is that support kind of free or would, is there like a recurring fee for, for, you know, major upgrades, but then kind of just cheap fixes are, are free or how does that work? Um, it would not be completely free again, it's, um, by case by case, but it will be, well, it won't be too expensive, but it depends on what kind of update you need. If yeah. you need like a major update, then like it will be different. Um, it maybe if your major update or adding a new feature, most likely we'll have you join another program with the students so that you, we can have like from like, it's not from scratch. It's building on what you have, but adding a new feature. Like, so it will take around seven weeks, but if it's like a very, very quick fix, for like just changing the size, then our in-house developer can probably um, just help you with it, but it will be at a very low cost. All right, and so, you guys so make if there is significant work to redo it, um, you, it would be working with another group of students, and that, that's very interesting. I like that idea. Would do you guys mm -hmm. make it compatible with iPad and um, and the Android tablets? Uh -huh. Um, if you guys were like, if you guys intend to have the iPad, we will have a team working on the one that with the iPad size. So it depends on what okay. the organization. Yeah. Yep. It's a, it's very case by case again. Okay. So you, so you guys have the 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 technology and power to do everything if if need be, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have okay. any other questions? Um, do you guys keep the code or would the code then go to the nonprofit if, you know, they brought on a developer to do it in-house or make updates in-house? Um, we do keep the code. This is why we have the um, project repository just so that we can update. But if you do want the entire ownership, that would be a separate conversation we can have on the side as well. So it's also okay. because when we make the app, there's a different difficulties. If like, for example, if your feature is very, um, complicated then there'll be like a different story than someone who just want the standard login because there are like um there, there are a lot of different features that's with like different level of difficulties that's why we cannot just give you like one answer yes or no or like just like expensive or not or like free or not so it is that these are the things that we talk outside sorry about that I, <laughs> I definitely know that this this community would would be interested in um, some way to kind of um, access that code um, collectively so that if there are other projects um, or replication grants, that type of thing um, that someone else could um, look at taking and building on that. Um, we've definitely uh, seen issues where uh, closed proprietary code ends up um, not being maintained over time and then um, the community has to start from scratch when doing something again. Uh, anything that can put that in an open repository or uh, would be viewed very positively from this community. Yeah, um, and also we do have an option of like open source and closed source depending on the um, what the nonprofit need as well. Um, because in the past when we work with the Peace Corp, it, they require they, their organization require open source because the, um, they're the government organization but we also have some organizations interested in the close one just so that for security reasons and other reasons so and also like this ownership if by any chance in the future you guys want to maintain it and take it it is like a pos it's a, uh, it is an option so it is pretty flexible in terms of that excellent i hope that answered your question Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, thank you guys for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. Um, it I hope that at some point we're able to um, get out with the legal services community and possibly work with you guys on a, a project and with some students. The idea of how you're really empowering students and teaching them as part of the process is what made this interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I guess I'll just Thank show my contact information. So you can either email hello at diverse.org or you can email directly to me, yc at diverse.org, if you guys have any other questions as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. This video um, should be up in a week or two up on our YouTube channel.
Um, we've got three more trainings scheduled through the end of the year. Um, we've got one on basic Excel tips tomorrow. We've got one coming in November on visualization through dashboards. And then we've got a specific dashboard one on Google Analytics custom dashboards for statewide websites coming up in December. Uh, that one was just added to our training schedule today. Uh, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Well, uh, thank we'll, you. We'll be posting slides, contact information, all that stuff up on the website. Great. Thank you. Thank you.